now that I have Cinemachine installed, the brain added, and the Cinemachine virtual camera added as components to my follow camera, the first thing I want to do is in the Cinemachine virtual camera, add the car to the follow and look at components in the virtual camera. I do that just by dragging the car into the into the box there. Now, if you're doing this in a first person game or a 2D game, you would put whatever object you wanna follow and or look at. Now, the priority is also important. So I've gotta remember that this priority is a 10. If I ever want to change the camera view, uh, it, the Cinemachine brain is gonna find that priority and activate the camera with the highest priority. So it's how you switch cameras in the game. If I ever wanted to have a street view or a, or a far away view of the car, which I might do actually pretty easily, I would have a follow camera and a dash camera, something like that. And then I would, uh, with visual scripting, I just easily flip those priorities. I left the lens settings mostly uh, the same as the defaults. Um, you can play with these if you want to. And the thing that I like about this script that comes with Cinemachine is if you just mouse over every or every indicator, it gives you the definition right there. Uh, there are no transitions. I just left that alone. But here's where the changes I made. I changed the body to transposer. This is what sets the distance from the component. So the X is zero. I'll go ahead and play with this. Check this out. If I move the X, it's going to change the the rotation point. Uh, the same with uh, Y and Z. So I think this is going to get closer. Oh, it's going to rotate. Right. And then the Z position is front and back. Yeah. And that's with the mode lock to target with world up. There's a few different modes in here, uh, and that's just the one I liked. I played with all of them to see what they would do and, and how they would behave differently. Now, the aim I changed to composer. I, I don't know if there's a different one point of view or same as follow target. I don't know if those would be any better or worse for what you're trying to do. But for what I did, uh, composer worked because I was getting some ground shaking when the car impacted the road going up and downhill. And so this feature is really cool. Check this out. If I go to show game window guides, you can see the this this is the, the composer window here. The tracked object offset also replaces the transform positions. So if I go to my camera's transform up here, I can do anything I want with these and they it's not gonna affect the settings at all. Cinemachine does override the camera transform object that you put it on. What I like about what Cinemachine is doing here is that it's got horizontal and vertical damping, meaning that uh, as the object moves horizontally and vertically, it's not gonna, the camera's not gonna go instantly. So for this, because it's a racing game, I want those to be a zero, because it's gotta be a follow cam and it's gotta react instantly. Uh, I left screen uh, X and Y at 0.5 apiece, those were defaults. Um, if we look here, it just says the horizontal screen position for the camera. Uh, the camera will rotate to position the tracked object here. I was, I was fine with what that looked like. Now here's where it gets interesting. There's a dead zone option. So I'm going to scale this way up so you can see that bar growing on the screen. That means that if I turn left and right, the, the camera will not react to anything in the dead zone. Uh, it's also the same for, for the height, so I'll, I can actually show you what this looks like. Um, there's two things. What you saw just there, there's a dead zone and a soft zone. Inside the dead zone, nothing happened. Inside the soft zone, the camera will slowly move to the position of the object. It is very disorienting to have that on in a racing game. So we're going to turn that completely off. Do that. 0.01 is the setting I like for the height because again, I was getting some weird looking shaking going up and downhill and that dead zone fixes it. And I've liked these Cinemachine settings so much that I don't know why a person wouldn't just add Cinemachine to their project before doing anything else. Let's start a new project, add Cinemachine, good to go, and then make this the camera always every time you want to do a camera. Now, if you have the uh, game window guides on, it's going to show up in play mode, uh, which is really weird. So I want to make sure you turn that off before you do like a demo in play mode or anything. And you know what, I'll cover some of these Cinemachine brain settings too. The camera frustum, that's a scene setting. So if we have uh, gizmos turned on, this is the camera frustum right here. That those white lines that show you like what kind of what the camera's looking at or what direction it's looking in. Uh, not just the gizmo for the camera, but the whole the whole thing. So when you show debug text, it will tell you which camera is active. And since there's only one for now, it's the only camera that is going to be active. And ignore time scale is kind of neat. Um, when it's enabled, the camera will always respond to real time user input and damping, even if the game is running in slow motion. But that might be something to where uh, if there's like a slow motion effect on purpose like uh, like a spell that's being cast on an enemy or something like that that causes them to be in slow motion like a like a mud effect or tar who knows what um, and yeah the other cool thing I like about this is that you can actually have this set to save during play so you can change all of the settings in play mode and then get out of play mode and it will save all your settings however you gotta remember to turn that off I'm gonna go into full screen here and do a quick demo now it's not built the lighting yet so ignore that flickering that's all that is but you can see the camera is still nice and smooth. It didn't have any impact on the camera that I had working before. All right, we spun out. And the spin out works just fine. 
see, I hope I don't get munched on. What I want to show you is how smooth it is going uphill and then back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> they won't leave me alone. See the sparks? That spark effect works out beautifully now. Here's the uphill. I was getting some shaking here. Now you can see it's very smooth going up that hill. And the same thing going down this hill coming up. The camera's nice and smooth. So there's other uh, other effects i got to fix, like shadow stuff. But the camera, at least, is is a little bit better. I was worried about Cinema Machine coming in and having a negative impact, like removing some of the progress I had made or having to do some rebuilding. But it's actually kind of a quick way to increase the control you have on your camera. There's a built-in screen shake I'm going to apply using Cinema Machine, and that's going to be in next week's video. So stick around for that. That's a pretty cool effect. I think I like it a lot. And later what I want to try and do is have a cutscene that plays at the start of the level so that way it just kind of feels like uh, the player gets a preview of what the level's going to play like before they have to actually play it. So i got to figure out how to make that skippable also or else that'd be annoying. Uh, and yeah, and that's the update for this week. Thanks so much for watching.